My name is Rio and welcome back to yet another match day vlog. So following a really busy weekend, only last week which saw us play twice in only two days, today Chester FC entertain Bury AFC at home where we look to notch up our first home victory of our pre-season campaign. So we've pretty much had a full week to prepare for this encounter so hopefully our lads will be feeling really fresh in order to get even more minutes and even more game time under their belts in preparation for the new season. So I really cannot wait for today because the weather looks set to be about 28 degrees so it's going to be an absolute scorcher under Harry Mack today so really cannot wait hopefully be a really entertaining game of football too to really make up for the fantastic weather so anyway I thoroughly cannot wait for the game now my match day vlog will be coming up right now so please subscribe like and also comment down your thoughts on the game below so without further ado let's get into my match day vlog right now enjoy even though berry fc still exists we will be competing with the new breakaway club called berry afc this afternoon who play four divisions below us so it should hopefully be a comfortable home win for us Anyway, our last match was on Sunday where a Chester FC 11 side won 1-0 away against Cliverow in what was an impressive result for a rather youthful slash reserve Seals side. Anyway, the opening period was a really average showing from us as it was the home side who came out of the blocks a lot more quicker than us. However, as the half went on, we did begin to grow into the game a lot more and we did show some promising signs. However, even though our opponents had plenty of chances, we stood our ground really well in defence and remained resilient to keep the scoreline goalless going into the half-time interval. Meanwhile, our second half showing was a lot more better because our confidence grew when in possession to create a lot more opportunities. Thankfully, Ethan Cartwright made the most just after the hour mark to make it 1-0 to us as he cleverly dinked over the Cliverow custodian to make it 1-0. Anyway, in the end, we remained resolute defensively to see the game out, thus recording a really encouraging result. So anyway, you can see the goal from that really good win over up north in Cliverow in my match day preview, which was out earlier on today. And also my match day highlights slash vlog for that game were also uploaded only yesterday. So make sure to check it out right now if you haven't done so already. Berry AFC ply their trade in the North West Counties Football League First Division North and will be making the trip from Greater Manchester determined to win their first ever promotion in their first ever full season. The Shakers were founded back in December 2019 by their supporters in an attempt to break away from the original Berry FC who were on the verge of being liquidated due to ongoing ownership issues with Steve Dale, their owner. Which is a similar scenario to when a group of our own supporters founded Chester FC back in March 2010 before sadly Chester City went out of business. However, despite Berry FC not kicking a ball for two seasons, they are in fact still a club, so if by some miracle they are saved, 
we could have yet another Northwich Victoria slash 1874 Northwich situation where two clubs are competing with one another. For now though, the new Berry AFC are the main focus for the majority of Shakers who, in their inaugural campaign in Step 6 last season, were top before their season was sadly brought to an early close due to Covid. Therefore, promotion to Step 5 is certainly a realistic aim for the Lancashire side this time out so they can finally put themselves back on the map again on their long road back to the AFL. Also, one former SEAL will be making a return to the Diva today who is winger Aidan Chippendale. Aidan joined us back in August 2013 on loan from Berry FC ironically where he scored one goal in seven games which was a thrilling late 2-1 home win over Macclesfield Town before returning to the Shakers in September 2013. Chippendale signed for the new Berry AFC in August of last year and has been there ever since. So although I do respect him for scoring a winner against one of our Cheshire rivals, I do still hope he is on the losing side later on today. I, I My score prediction for today's encounter is Chester FC 3, Barry AFC 1. So for the Seals, I think James Hardy, Darren Stevenson and also Declan Weeks will be our three scorers while for the away side. So for the Shakers, I think it will be Leon McDevitt who, who will get the consolation. So although Berry are a really big club, you do have to put it into some form of context because Berry AFC, who we do play today, are a different version to the original Berry FC. So I do think because we do play four leagues above Berry AFC, I do think it will be a resounding home win today. And hopefully, fingers crossed, come five o'clock, I will be correcto. I am now really looking forward to yet another Chester FC fix today in what looks set to be a scorcher at the Diva with temperatures expected to reach near 30 so hopefully it will be a great encounter as well to top it off. It is a huge shame that we sadly won't be able to welcome any Berry AFC supporters as it would have been a brilliant occasion between two supporter-owned outfits. So it is disappointing in that sense, but hopefully though, uh, we can boost our confidence with another convincing win ahead of three away trips next week, where on Tuesday we travel to Wincham Park, home of Witten Albion, to play Northwich Victoria away, who ground share with Witten. On Friday night, we travel to see our old foes, Macclesfield FC, another club in the new guise. And on Saturday, we make the journey to Greater Manchester, where we play Radcliffe away. So an exciting week to look forward to. Four games in seven days, and hopefully we can kick it off today with a great win. So anyway, without further ado, my match day vlog will be coming up right now, showing you all of the action and hopefully all of the goals we score today. Hopefully if we do score any, please subscribe like and also comment down your thoughts on the game below so anyway stay tuned come on you seals let's do this come on lads I have now arrived here at the Diva ahead of today's game, so the weather is absolutely scorching. What a lovely day for it. The pitch again in incredible condition, the ground looking really good too, so really can't wait to be back at the Diva yet again for another Chester FC football fix. So yeah, great day for it. Great to see so many familiar faces again today, so hopefully we can get a win today to get our first 
Chris, home win of Chris season. So, auto Barry do play four leagues below us. It won't be easy because, like I say, they do have some really good players, such as Aidan Chippendale and also Tom Greaves up front. So, it won't be an easy game today, but I do think a win would be really good today to improve, have a confidence ahead of not one, not two, but three away games next week. So what a day for it now, really can't wait. Hopefully we can witness a goal fest on a really lovely day. Come on City, let's do this. Okay, well, once more, a very warm welcome to everyone here at the Beaver Stadium this afternoon. It's very line up like this. He got number one, Jack Atkinson. Number two, Matthew Williams. Number three, Scott Metcalf. Number four, Harry Rizal. Number five, John O'Hunt. Number six, A.O. Here's your Chester FC squad for today's match. We are in a 4-4-2 formation. So in goal is number one, Louis Gray. In defence is two, Kevin Roberts. Three, Simon Grand. Six, Dan Cowan. And 20, Jamie Morgan. In midfield is 17, Jude Oyebo. Four, Declan Weeks. Eight, Captain George Glendon, and 27, John Johnston, and up front is 10, Anthony Dudley, and also 11, Darren Stevenson. On our substitutes bench is 5, Danny Liversey, 7, James Hardy, 9, George Waring, 12, Luke Clark, 14, Harrison Burke, 18, Matty Williams, 19, Lloyd Marsh Hughes, and Trailist. Meanwhile, here is your Barry AFC squad for today's game. Enjoy the vlog. Come on, City. Go on, Blue Boys.
Jackson. Come on. Go on, Tots. Yeah, sometimes.
half time Chess FC nil, Berry AFC nil. So in general we have been by far the better team in possession because we have played some lovely stuff. But I do think we are uh, we do need to stop being a little bit sloppy because sometimes we are getting into some really good positions but in the final third uh, we are a little bit too complacent and also sloppy so fair play to Berry, even though they do play four leagues below us they have had some decent chances and uh, going forward they have been rather dangerous but thankfully in defence most of the time both Simon Grand and also Dan Cowan have been really reassured to clear away any danger so nil nil at half time uh, not a bad half in general we have played some good stuff like I say but I do think in the final third we do need to be a lot more clinical now getting into the second half so hopefully we can fix that to hopefully get a few goals in the second half come on City Come on, City! <laughs> hey!
Time Chester FC four Berry AFC two. So after a rather frustrating opening half, where we did have a lot of possession, where we couldn't sadly uh, create too many chances, we really turned on the style in the final half to get a really convincing four two win in some fashion in a six goal thrill or so. A really entertaining second half which contained six goals to hopefully give us a lot of confidence ahead of the new season. So plenty of positives to take out of today because for example, James Hardy got two assists and also one really good goal towards the end to put the cherry on the top of really good second half showing. So a really good day today at the Diva, really warm and a really sweltering performance in, fr in front of goal to really get us an another fantastic win. So anyway, great win today, more reaction shortly, come on you seals. <laughs> Chester FC4, Barry AFC2, so we overcame a rather sloppy and also frustrating opening half to really turn on the style in a thrilling and also entertaining second period to emerge as deserved victors in some fashion. Overall, we are full value for the win today because we controlled large parts of the encounter with our possession-based football because we played some lovely stuff on our lush surface to stretch the visitors out. Particularly in the opening half, 
we were perhaps a little bit too overconfident at times due to us being a tad careless and complacent on the ball but luckily enough we had our shooting boots on in the second 45 to put on an enjoyable show. Berry AFC can be really proud of their efforts today because I didn't expect them to be that good this afternoon because they played some nice football for the league they play in while they made us work hard for our win. I know it was only a pre-season friendly but judging by what I witnessed of Berry, I do predict them to have a really strong chance of winning the title this season on the basis of their calibre of players and also work rate of their team. So anyway the first period wasn't pretty because even though we controlled the majority of the half it was a bit frustrating to watch at times because we didn't quite have that cutting edge in the final third. Although we played the ball on the deck and made some nice moves in some periods, we were a little bit too sloppy in possession in other stages because we rushed some moves rather than taking our time, thus causing some misplaced passes. We still created plenty of chances though with our first being only four minutes in where Dan Cowan nodded just wide following a George Glendon delivery. At the other end, Louis Gray was called into action to make a fine low save to deny Tom Greaves from opening his account. On the 11th minute mark though, we were presented with a penalty as Dan Cowan was brought down inside the penalty area. Unfortunately though, Anthony Dudley missed the chance to make it 1-0 to us because his spot kick cannoned back off the right hand post. Declan Weeks was the next seal to go really close again because a cheeky touch from a Kevin Roberts cross sailed inches wide. After a two minute drinks break in the searing heat we had further chances with Jude Oyebo firstly bending a shot over before a fierce studly effort forced a strong save out of Jack Atkinson. Our final chance of the half resulted in a similar story with Berry's custodian again denying Dudley in what was a frustrating half for our new number 10. So no goals going into the interval but we were still provided with encouragement going into the second half given the amount of opportunities we created. Meanwhile, the second half was so much more better because we converted our superior possession into goals by swarming around Barry AFC in and around the penalty area in the sweltering uh, conditions. It wasn't particularly a much improved showing from us as our opponents also stepped up a couple of gears to cause us some scares by equalising not once but twice, so fair play to the Shakers for being resilient, hard working and also conveying a never say die attitude. Anyway to begin with, substitute James Hardy made an immediate impression in his first contribution after coming on at half time as he shirked a couple of tackles before a deflected effort missed the target. It only took us another minute for us to break the deadlock, courtesy of George Glendon who blasted home on the edge of the penalty box to make it 1-0 to us. We weren't in front for long though, as John O'Hunt prodded over the line for Berry AFC to make it one all. Just after the hour mark, Matty Williams scored his first ever Chester FC goal by flicking across the face off goal to make it 2-1 to us. Lloyd Marsh Hughes, another substitute who tried to be a menace around the goal area, wasn't a million miles away from doubling our lead by blazing wide. Meanwhile, next, Lloyd Marsh Hughes was involved in the action again shortly after as he did manage to find the net this time but unfortunately his strike 
Fuels was disallowed for offside. We were dealt with another setback courtesy of Scott Metcalf, who struck a quality free kick into the back of the net for Barry AFC to make it to all, giving Louis Gray no chance. On the 75th minute mark, we found the lead for the third time of the half, as Harrison Burke also scored his first ever chest goal to make it 3-2 to us by planting a header into the top right corner. Berry so nearly scored a third equaliser of the encounter as a trialist killed a shot inches wide off the far post. That wasn't to be an issue though as minutes before the final whistle went, James Hardy wrapped things up for us to make it 4-2 with a wonderful goal as he skipped past numerous Berry players before slotting home in off the post. We didn't receive any further scares after that, so we can now breathe a huge sigh of relief after securing our first home pre-season success. So for the second Saturday in a row, James Hardy has to be my man of the match again for today because he was sublime by notching up one goal and two assists. I don't really read too much into pre-season, but judging by our last two home clashes, Hardy has really stood out for me with his creativity and skill on the ball, so if he can take this form into the league, when it really matters, we have a really exciting player in our hands. James's two corner deliveries for Matty Williams and also Harrison Burke's goals were both spot on while he put the cherry on top of an impressive performance with an amazing solo goal at the end where he brushed past numerous Berry AFC players. Meanwhile, Dan Cowan and also Simon Grand both had solid games in defence, with the former particularly being an aerial threat at the other end too, as he went close to netting on a few occasions, so hopefully Dan is an all-rounder, which is just what we need. True Doyebo was enjoyable to watch out on the wing, as he was involved in some lovely passages of play, but it's just a shame our midfielders couldn't really play the ball through to him quicker, as on a number of occasions, Jude was in acres of space out on the left. Also, both Matty Williams and Harrison Burke were a breath of fresh air when they came on, with both of our young centre-halves adding a goal each to their name. Barry's first goal was a bit of a mix-up all round, but aside from that, they both had strong games, which will be great for their development and learning. Our next match is on Tuesday night where we travel to Mid Cheshire to play Northwich Victoria away in what will be our first of three away matches in less than a week. So I am really looking forward to this one because it will be played at Wincham Park, home of Witten Albion, which is a lovely little ground, so I cannot wait for my second visit in what looks set to be another scorcher. All in all, another thoroughly enjoyable afternoon at the Diva today as the weather was belting and to cap it off, we turned on the style in the second half to put on a really entertaining show. It is a shame that more supporters weren't able to witness it because our attendance of 437 was really, really poor, although I will read more into our crowds when the actual proper season commences with no restrictions. So hopefully we will be back up to our usual average of 2,000 plus again really soon. So anyway, this does conclude my match day vlog for today. I really do hope you enjoyed it, a six goal fest and I'm sure you did enjoy it, please like, subscribe, and also comment down your thoughts 
on the game below. So anyway, my next video will be out on Monday, which will be my match day preview for Northwich Victoria away while on Tuesday. I will also do a match day vlog, so look out for those two videos. So anyway, a great win for the Seals today. Long may it continue. What a win. Come on, you Seals. Get in. These worries are best cleared from the mind by the romance chant method, a technique where you will also place your lips naturally in kissing position. <laughs>